Example of such companies could be Zomato, Swiggy, Paytm, etc., where the valuation is mainly compared on the basis. Here, EV represents what the value of the firm, which includes all the sources of capital employed by the business, and EBITDA represents earnings available to the firm. Guys, this method is highly effective for valuing companies with a strong cash flow. So, sum up all the discounted cash flows including terminal value and divide these cash flows present by. so a high p multiple means investor is expecting higher growth from the company which is compensated in form of higher price what investor is ready to pay hello friends so have you ever wondered how the analysts decide whether a stock is undervalued overvalued whether a company is worth investing or not well the answer lies in the equity valuation so the process of determining a company's fair market value is the equity valuation in this video i'll break down the step-by-step -step process of equity valuation covering key methods of valuation used by the professionals so if you are an investor financial student or you are curious about how stock valuation work stay tuned till the end of this video equity valuation it's a valuation process determining the fair valuation of the company's stock this helps investors in deciding whether the stock is undervalued overvalued or fairly priced friends there are two main methods to find fair valuation of the stock method number one dcf valuation discounted cash flow valuation so this process this method is based on company's future cash flows growth potential etc second relative valuation friends it compares company's valuation multiple to its industry peers now let's dive deeper into these valuation method to understand how it works now friends let's start with the discounted cash flow method so discounted cash flow method is most widely used valuation technique in the world it estimates company's value based on its future cash flows so here is how you should proceed with the dcf valuation step one forecast free cash flows to the business friends you can start with the projection of key financial numbers of the company say operating profits future capex and working capital requirement now based on this you should calculate free cash flows of the business based on the key financial numbers what you have projected. Now friends, what question comes is, what should be my projection period? Because we cannot keep this projection for infinite period. So usually we keep this projection for five to 10 years. Assuming over this period of time, company's high growth growth phase would be over and company will reach to the settled growth phase, which is a constant growth phase. Step two determining the discount rate, which is also known as weighted average cost of capital. Friends, cost of capital consists of two components of capital sources, which is cost of debt and cost of equity. So cost of debt is the cost of borrowing capital from the market, where the cost of equity is the minimum required return by the shareholders. And then we multiply these costs, cost of debt and cost of equity, with the respective weightage of debt and equity employed by the company. Step three, calculate terminal value. Friends, since companies don't have any expiry date, we estimate their value beyond the forecast be here using the Gordon's growth model or exit multiple method. Step 4. Friends discount these cash flows to the present value including terminal value. So the cost of capital what we estimated in step 2 will be used to discount cash flows what we projected in step 1 and terminal value what we projected in step 3. Now in step 5 we'll calculate intrinsic value of the company. So sum up all the discounted cash flows including terminal value and divide these cash flows present value with the number of shares outstanding to get intrinsic value per share. So once you have found this intrinsic value or DCF value of the business or per share value, you compare this with the current market price to decide whether the stock is a buy or sell. Guys, this method is highly effective for valuing companies with a strong cash flow. Now friends, let's discuss our second valuation method, relative valuation technique. This is also known multiple based valuation. Friends, under this valuation method, we try to find fair value of the company or business based on how its peers are priced in the market. It's a comparison based valuation method. So we can divide relative valuation method into following five steps. Let's discuss these steps in detail. Step one, finding comparable companies which are already listed in the market. So here friends, you need to find companies just like your target company, which you want to value which are already priced in the market. Now in step two, we find market value of equity and firm of firm value of these comparable companies what you have selected in step one. Now equity value is simply the share price at which these companies are trading in the market. And in the firm value, we add all the sources of the capital, debt, preference share capital, etc., to find what's the total value of the business, including other sources. Step three, convert equity value and firm value calculated in step two into multiples like EV to sales, EV to EBITDA, EV to EBIT or price to earning. Here EV represents firm value where the price represents only the equity price. Now friends, multiple help us in standardization of equity value 
value and the firm value of comparable companies. As different companies can be of different size, so their absolute values are not comparable. And that's why we need to convert these absolute values into multiples so that we can eliminate their size differences. Step number four, we find industry benchmark multiples based on the peers multiple, but we have calculated in step three. Now in this process, in this step, we calculate industry benchmark multiples like median, 25th percentile or 75th percentile. So these are the usually three benchmark multiples we calculate in the industry. Now, in step five, we find the final value of a target company based on the industry benchmark multiples, what we calculated in step four. So if my company is an average fundamental company, I'll apply median multiple of the industry. And if my company is a weak fundamental company, I'll apply 25th percentile of the industry multiple. And in case of strong fundamental company, I'll apply 75th percentile multiple of the industry. So friends, this is how this relative valuation process works, where we start with the finding peers and end with the finding fair valuation of our company. Now friends, let's talk about some of the most commonly used multiples by the analyst in the relative valuation technique. Price to earning multiple, which is also known P multiple. So P multiple represents what relationship between the stock price per share versus the earnings per share. So a high P multiple means investor is expecting higher growth from the company, which is compensated in form of higher price what investor is ready to pay currently in the market. And whereas a low P multiple indicates that the stock is either undervalued or investor is expecting lower growth from the company in the future. Now, second important multiple which we usually compare is enterprise value to EBITDA which is also known as EV to EBITDA multiple. Here, EV represents what the value of the firm, which includes all the sources of capital employed by the business and EBITDA represents earnings available to the firm. The full form of EBITDA is earning before interest tax depreciation amortization. So here we have not detected any interest part. We have not detected any preferential capital part. It means this earning is available to entire business. Friends, usually we use this multiple for capital intensive companies like oil and gas sector, telecom sector, etc. Now friends, the third multiple, which is commonly used in the market to compare is the EV to sales multiple. So this multiple represents the relationship between the firm value and the sales of the business. This multiple is normally used for early growth stage companies where initially they have negative profits. So here sales is the main value driver and valuation is entirely dependent upon how the business is doing in terms of sales. Example of such companies could be Zomato, Swiggy, Paytm, etc. where the valuation is mainly compared on the basis of sales. So friends, by comparing these multiples with the competitors, analysts can get a relative sense of company's current valuation. Now friends, which valuation method is best? Friends, both intrinsic valuation and relative valuation have their own pros and cons. So if you talk about DCF, DCF is a great for intrinsic valuation but depends upon the accurate forecast. So if you, there is any error in the estimating future cash flows of the business, this valuation may go wrong. Multiples are helpful for quick comparison but highly dependent upon the market condition. So if the market is in the bull run or overpriced, your multiples are going to be on the higher side and valuation would be on the higher side. So friends, in nutshell, we can say use TCA valuation for intrinsic valuation and use multiple based valuation for quick comparison and always cross check your assumptions to avoid valuation errors. So if you found this video helpful, please share and subscribe for more insight on the financial modeling and valuation. Also comments below which valuation method do you prefer? So see you in the next video. Bye.